so we're going to hopefully end it off on this part and we're going to continue reading the book of Enoch chapter 5 verse 5 therefore shall ye execrate your days and the years of your life shall perish and the years of your destruction shall be multiplied in eternal execration and ye shall find no mercy in those days ye shall make your names an eternal execration unto all the righteous and by you shall all who curse curse and all the sinners and godless shall imprecate by you and for you the godless there shall be a curse and so therefore let's go and skip to verse 8 and then there shall be bestowed upon the elect wisdom and they shall all live and never again sin either through ungodliness or through pride but they who are wise shall be humble and they shall not again transgress nor shall they sin all the days of their life nor shall they die of the divine anger or wrath remember Yahweh was angry with all the nations his wrath is on all their armies what is that talking about their religions and the people who speak up for these uh, so called gods that cannot save nobody that's the reason why people die of the divine anger it tells you that Yahweh your God is a jealous God so those who are honoring the name of the Most High right those who the Most High Yahweh has saved they shall not again transgress nor shall they sin in all their days of their life nor shall they die of the divine anger or wrath but they shall complete the number of the days of their life and their lives shall be increased in peace you see that Yahweh was the one who increases Yahweh was the one who multiplies and the years of their joy shall be multiplied that's part of the benefits of honoring the one true living God Yahweh because with Yahweh is a longevity okay he will let you be here on this earth for however long he wants you to be here okay so this is the reason why in these times and in these days we're going to see who are the people that are worshiping the one true living God and who are those that believe in lies it says again for the righteous their lives shall be increased in peace and the years of their joy shall be multiplied and in eternal gladness and peace all the days of their life and the Most High Yahweh says that He will give you, He will give you, He will give us a long life as long as we continue to be us, as long as we continue to be faithful to Yahweh our God and do not change, because Yahweh our God do not change. So we're not supposed to have a change of heart. We're not supposed to become weak-hearted, because this is why Yahweh our God loves us because we are standing in all of His name. We're doing it for Him. So let's move on now and now let's read in Daniel chapter 8 verse 23 which I made a post about this on Facebook for those that are friends with me on there then they seen it for themselves and therefore they would understand what this is talking about so let's bring it out on here it says in the latter part of their reign when rebels have become completely wicked a fierce looking king a master of intrigue will arise remember that the most high Yahweh says that I will do something in your days that you will not believe even if it's told to you and what he said he was going to do he was going to raise up the Babylonians right so that's what it's talking about a fierce looking king a master of intrigue will arise and it's not talking about you know Nebuchadnezzar reincarnated it's talking about one of his descendants today he will become very strong but not by his own power right he has power with the mafia he has power with the militia 
he has power with those people in Israel. So this is what it's saying. That he will become strong, but not by his own power. He will cause astounding devastation and will succeed in whatever he does. He will destroy those who are mighty, the holy people. He will cause deceit to prosper and he will consider himself superior. When they feel secure, he will destroy many and take his stand even against the prince of princes. Yet he will be destroyed, but what? But not by human power. So who is this prince of princes? This is basically talking about the great prince, Michael, who protects your people, the spiritual prince of heaven. I mean, this is the reason why the Most High Yahweh says that he will be destroyed, but not by human power. Well, sounds familiar. Sounds like Mr. Trump, right? Recently, Mr. Trump is saying how he's putting together a space force and they're gonna go to Mars. So pretty much, you know, it's time for us, man, to get back into our Halo Master Chief mode. For those that don't know what this is, this is basically a video game, you know? It was actually one of my favorite video games. But the makers of this video game, they basically changed things up, you know? I mean, when I first started playing this video game, Halo, I loved it because it had split screen, okay? For those that don't know what is split screen, well, it's basically when you have about four people over in your house, right? And all four of them can play on the same console. These people took out basically the split screen gaming from most games nowadays. You know, most games nowadays that you play, you have to have the game and the console and somebody else have to have the game and the console and then you can both play if you have an, an, uh, an online account, okay, from whichever console that requires for you to have an online account to play video games with other people. And before, you know, it wasn't like that. They do all of this to get rich off the poor. These games that they make nowadays, you pay $50, $60 for it, and then three months later, they come out with some DLC, which requires you to pay another $30, and then another three months, another DLC, which costs $40. You see that? So you're paying like $120 altogether for these video games. And it, it was never like that. But what happened is that these people, right? These people, they get greedy, okay? So they hear somebody that came up with a wicked scheme. They say, hey, let's stop making, you know, these games that are worth the money for these people. Let's start making unfinished games, right? And then we'll just go ahead and release these DLCs. And what happened is the rest of these game companies, right? They think that's a good idea, right? Oh, why not, Stevie? Yeah, let's do that and then they become evil so psalm 62 and 10 says do not trust an extortion that's what they do you see that they trust an extortion they get rich off the poor they give us lies oh yes it's the best video game yes it's the best movie it's the best tv show but they're only giving you a little bit it's not worth your time it's not worth your money okay and again you know i'm not speaking about every video game every tv show every movie there's still some that actually live up to you know their standards to their to their quality okay so again for the most part right when it comes down to it do not trust an extortion even from amongst our people this is what they do you know they they hear oh look man i made a, a come up from this dude here i sold him this for whatever price when it really cost this much you know and then other people are, oh yes yeah, that means he's a dummy that means i can go ahead and make money off of him too so this is what they do they trust in extortion they put vain hope in stolen goods so it says though your riches increase do not set your heart on them and what happens is that's exactly what happens to these people they and then the most high how it takes it all away from them then their ratings go down they start losing their business start losing their tv shows and their actors all because of pride and arrogance all because they were greedy for gain see that it says though your riches increase do not set your heart on them 
why? Well, let's read why. In Proverbs 4 and 25, it says, Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. So in other words, right? Don't be trying to make a living off the poor, you know? Don't be trying to do wrong. If you're doing right, continue to do right, you know? If you was making good games, good videos, good whatever back then, then keep doing good. Why try to do bad? This is what it's saying. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Proverbs 23 and 5. Cast but a glance at riches and they are gone. For they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. <laughs> Oh, which, you know, we're going to talk about that eagle most high willing. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 12. Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by injustice. Just like Donald Trump, right? He wants to build a wall. He wants to build a space force. He's been watching too much Star Trek, right? Star Wars. So this is what it is. Most high Yahweh says, woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by injustice has not Yahweh Almighty determined that the people's labor is only fuel for the fire that the nations exhaust themselves for nothing in other words you know they they make these idols they they tell you to go to their churches they hold these assemblies and congregations right they celebrate these holidays all for nothing because why because at the end of the day, this is what's going to happen. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. You see that? Everything right here, right now that's happening, is all temporal. It only lasts but a moment. All right? Remember, the Most High Yahweh says that this is just the beginning. Okay? We haven't seen nothing. We're going to actually be living here to witness the destruction of the wicked. One day, everything that we are forced to deal with now, we won't have to deal with it no more. So that's what it means. You know, this is why the Most High Yahweh says it's considered to be like the days of Noah. All right, but spiritually, okay, the spiritual waters will wash away all of this negativity, all of these lies. Right? That's the reason why we read this here. Isaiah chapter 20, verse 16. So this is what the Sovereign Yahweh says. See, I lay a stone into Zion one, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plumb line. Hell will sweep away your refuge, the lie, and water will overflow your hiding place. Furthermore, look what it says here, right? For you people that want to continue to be proud, you want to speak up for idols that can't save you, right? You people that swear that you're going to go to heaven and you're going to be with Jeebus guys or whatever so-called God you worship with a thousand years. Look what it says here. Your covenant with death will be annulled. Your agreement with the realm of the dead will not stand. When the overwhelming skirt sweeps by, you will be beaten down by it. That's what's in store for you people. That is the portion the Most High Yahweh has decreed for you. Again, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh as the waters cover the seas. Job 27 and 13. Here is the fate the Most High allots to the wicked. The heritage a ruthless man receives from the Almighty. However many his children, their fate is the sword. His offspring will never have enough to eat. Why? Because they are like death, never satisfied, okay? The plague will bury those who survive him, and their widows will not weep for them. Though he heaps up silver like dust and clothes like piles of clay, while he lays up the righteous will wear, and the innocent will divide his silver. 
So that's the reason why the Most High Yahweh says, you know, we're not supposed to want anything they have right now because these people, ain't, they're not even going to live to enjoy what they have now, okay? And the Most High Yahweh says that he's going to give his people everything that we never had. So that's why we're not supposed to want it now because it's already there in the future for us waiting. You just have to have hope. You just have to wait for that day, right? That's what it means to wait for your God. Wait for the day that he said would come to pass. I would try Job 40 and 15. Look what it says here about Bohemoth. Look at Bohemoth, which Bohemoth is talking about. These wicked rulers of the earth. Okay, the wicked kings of the earth. This is what it's talking about. Some people may say, no, it's talking about monster. I know this, but again, spiritually, this is talking about the wicked rulers of the earth. Look at Bohemoth, which I made along with you, and which feeds on grass like an ox. What strength it has in its loins, what power in the muscles of its belly, just like we read in Job. However many his children, the Most High Yahweh says that they will still feel the punishment. It says its tail sways like a cedar, the sinews of its thighs are close-knit. Furthermore, look what it says now, right? Its bones and its bones are tubes of bronze, its limbs like rods of iron. It's talking about his kin, okay? The Greeks, the Romans. Jeremiah 49 and 22. Look, an eagle will soar and swoop down, spreading its wings over Basra. And that day, the heart of Edom's warriors will be like the heart of a woman in labor. Which, that's happening right now, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go ahead and read this article from the Washington Post. European leaders are indignant and defiant over Trump's G7 statement, but they're not surprised, okay? So pretty much, this is what's going on in these times and in these days. Edom's warriors, right? The best of them, they're speaking up against what's going on right now, right? Like a woman in labor, they can't believe that this is happening never thought that this would ever happen right just like here i shared this post if you are already a member from this group but basically it just shows you you know how these people they just can't believe it it says i don't know how to say this but if you support locking children in cages and separating them from their parents because they crossed an imaginary line on a giant rock floating in infinite space you're not a patriot you're an asshole so this is what it's talking about you know Edom's warriors they can't believe this is happening and the Most High Yahweh says this was gonna happen to his people because of their disobedience praise Yahweh